You may have seen my community post yesterday about this free make and take for Back to Hogwarts, which is a Harry Potter event where the UK and Europe got a free make and take, which was a little Hogwarts Express poly bag. And if you are feeling like you're missing out over in the US and Canada, fear not because September 8th, it will be coming to Lego stores near you. Though last year I did make it to the Back to Hogwarts Lego event and I think the make and take last year was a bit better because we got this buildable wand, which I'd love to see something like this, but for a lightsaber around May 4th, that would be really, really cool. And personally, I just think it's a bit better than the Hogwarts Express that they're giving out this year. But I will not be making it to a Lego store. In fact, I am gonna be picking up one of the advent calendars to review. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But today I'm gonna be taking a look at every set that comes out over the next few days and giving each a ranking and seeing how that fares up to the other sets. Now, I'm not gonna remember all of these. So I'm just gonna give them a number, one to 100, based on how good I think the set is. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show them all in order of how I rank them and see if I agree with my list. But before we get too far into the video, we do have to welcome a brand new member to the channel, Cardboard Box 42. So if you do want to join the members board here, which by the way, these are all quite good quality 3D printed tiles. And you not only get access to the members exclusive Discord, but also at the higher tier access to every single set of instructions I have ever made with a handful of exclusive ones you won't be finding on Rubricable. But I think let's get straight into the sets and we'll start off with the advent calendars because Hopefully these will be very quick to go through. First off, we have the Star Wars Advent Calendar and we've got quite a good selection of minifigures this year. The builds are always good. And I'll get into that a bit more tomorrow because they are based on very specific ships from Star Wars that I completely didn't realize originally. The Leia and Luke are very nice minifigures. We did get an Endor Leia last year. I don't think we got a Luke Skywalker, but we are getting that new Luke hairpiece if you do own any of the older Return of the Jedi Lukes and haven't picked up that hairpiece from Pick a Brick yet. As for the torsos, we have a Tatooine torso on Luke and a Hoth themed torso on Leia. I really do like all these Christmas torsos and they look good with the Death Star ones and all the ones we've got previously. We also get a 501st Trooper and a B2 Battle Droid, very welcome additions. I still want to see a Christmas fired Clone Trooper and Battle Droid next year. Perhaps a B1 Battle Droid in Christmas colours and then a Clone Trooper with some sort of Kamino jumper or something that relates back to the clones. We also get a Soka from the T6, which I think is great. The T6 isn't too great of a model. We've recently in the UK and across most of Europe. Got the Sabine magazine, which is up right now on Bricklink if you would like to purchase it for yourself. There is only three of them right now, so make sure if you do want it, you are heading straight over to there and purchasing it, and then you can come back, watch the rest of the video. And the last minifigure is one of those Moff Gideon Praetorian Guards, which is really, really fun because we get two in the set, which hopefully in a few months time, I'll have to review on the channel when it goes on sale because it is quite an expensive set, but there are three Praetorians that show up in the scene. So you're getting the third one in the advent. It definitely for Mando fans makes you want to pick up the advent. If you're not interested in the Christmas torsos, though, I think a lot of us are definitely interested in collecting all of them. And there's actually gonna be a video coming out going over all of the other Christmas themed torsos. So again, if you wanna see anything about this advent, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I think the Star Wars advent is getting a solid 82 from me. As for the next advent, there will be some spoilers. I will have images up on screen of all these advents. So first off, sorry about the Star Wars ones. And secondly, if you don't want any spoilers for the advents or perhaps you only cared about the Star Wars advent, be sure to get to the time shown on screen where we can continue with the other sets. But we'll look at Harry Potter next. And I think Harry Potter is always an awkward one to do because every other year they seem to be your ball themed. And I don't think it's necessarily the most popular of themes because they did a full wave of sets that were all your ball themed and have never touched on it again as far as I can see. Like this year, there is nothing to do with the Yule Ball. So if you aren't a fan of the Yule Ball, that is great. If you are a fan of the Yule Ball, then let me know down in the comments. But I like the mix of 
Hogwarts and Christmas builds. That gives the Lego Harry Potter advent a 47. City is city, you're getting your Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, Snowman, and you're also getting a Nutcracker build, which is quite nice, and a few different minifigures and accessories like a scooter, a skateboard, a buggy. So it's a really good city builder and you're also getting them fun winter themes you can put around your Lego city if you are building one or even just dot around your display. Lego cities, always a solid. I think that has to be a 64. Now the Lego Disney advent calendar is definitely an interesting one because they've opted with mini mini dolls, which I haven't really seen too many times before. I think they were included in some of the old book sets where they had a miniature scene in a book and it makes sense to shrink the minifigures but it actually works with the advent because of how small the builds are. You're getting a Disney castle, you're getting a few stalls and surroundings. I don't see the Disney advent being very popular for people to pick up specifically for the figures so I'm gonna have to say 21. Whereas Friends has opted to use the regular size mini dolls and have a few different accessories. Again, you could probably dot around your display. The Lego Friends advent is always another decent build but I'm gonna have to say 42. It seems that Spider-Man hasn't revealed all the builds for its advent which is interesting but we do get a look at all the minifigures on the box you can see Green Goblin, you can see Venom, you can see Spider-Man, you can see Spider-Ghost or Gwen and you can also see Spider-Ham who is a snowman not a minifigure but you are getting that exclusive head in white which I think is like the third time we've seen it. We've seen the regular Spider-Man then we got a Venom one in a minifigure pack and now we're seeing him as a snowman. On top of this, we will be getting an exclusive Moles Morales in a green Christmas jumper. And again, I really do like the Christmas sweaters. Just for that Moles Morales and that spider ham snowman, I think the advent calendar for Marvel is going to be a good one this year, but not too good. We'll sit with a 53. Before we get into the actual sets coming out today, there is a CMF line, the Dungeons and Dragons, which loads of people have been finding early. And honestly, I'm a bit surprised I haven't seen it pop up in any stores near me, as we did get the last CMF quite a bit early. There are some really cool elements in here that will probably remain unique to this CMF because I don't really see too many of them being used in other lines. But of course, there is that chance for a recolor, much like we've seen with the Dragon Head which does feature in this CMF, but a ton of great minifigures, and I'll definitely consider picking up a few to add to my collection if I see them dotted around. I really do like these CMF lines, and especially Dungeons & Dragons, all the unique molds we've got. I'm gonna have to give it a high number, like 84. This month seems to lean heavily into those ideas and other themes that LEGO doesn't usually make. First off, we do have The Legend of Zelda. We have the great Deku Tree. I'll be honest, I've never played any of these games but from my standpoint, it does still look like a really cool set. That price, however, £260, I really don't know if that is worth it, but perhaps that is the price tag that comes along with Zelda. It is another Nintendo theme, and whilst the Animal Crossing sets do appear to have been a decent value, I think they are a decent price given they're a Nintendo theme. If LEGO was just to come out with a bunch of animal themed sets at those price tags, at the same price tags as Sonic and Mario, I don't think anyone would be picking them up, but I do think Nintendo does carry a heavy price. Nonetheless, it's a great treat and I like the fact you can switch between the green and the pink blossomy leaves. And because I'm not a fan of Zelda and have no attachment to this tree, the price really does ruin it for me. So I'm gonna have to say a low number, so we'll give it a 27. Next up, we have the Christmas table decoration, which is really, really nice. And I'd love to pick this up at some point. 40 pound is a bit expensive, but when it goes in them January sales, we're looking at 30 pound. I think the lowest you could probably see this drop is 20 pounds. Some Christmas sets do really drop when it comes to the new year, but we'll probably have to wait a few years for that 20 pound price mark. That's a retiring, shop's got it on clearance sort of price. But even at that 40 pound, it's a great set. It's a great table centerpiece. I think I'm gonna have to give this a 65. The Christmas ornament selection is decent at best, but I do prefer last year's gingerbread men. I think that's definitely a better set. Last year we got the gingerbread men, we also got the nutcracker which was really cool and these just remind me of the make and takes they have around Christmas. They are cheap, 10.99, but 
They're also around the price of the gingerbread men and the nutcracker. So if you're looking to get in some Christmas decorations, I would definitely recommend picking up some of them. If you already have the gingerbread men, definitely pick up another one and use any of your spare parts or rearrange the parts to make custom gingerbread men. The gingerbread men are so customizable. You can really have like five packs of them and all the gingerbread men be in their own gingerbread decoration. I'll let you know all the different make and takes coming out in December and November and possibly even October as well as the ones of course happening in September that I said about at the start of the video. I think this is going to be the worst set of the video and I'm going to give it a 12. But this Halloween barn is really really cool. I like all the different eyes and teeth that they've added around and it reminds me of the VIP pack bundles we got last year, but there's definitely a few more building parts. You've got their masonry bricks in dark green and brown. It is really, really cool. And the best part about this, you don't have to spend anything extra to buy this set, except for what it's worth, $12.99. It's a decent price. I think that is a solid 60. Now the Burrow isn't out yet. It comes out on the 4th of September, but if you are an Insiders member, which is free, and if you want the Burrow, you definitely have to look into being an Insiders member so you can get it early. The set in general is a really nice set. 220 pound doesn't seem that expensive. 2,405 pieces, and there are a lot of small pieces. So that's why I like to determine it based off its weight rather than its piece count, because the small pieces are definitely gonna make that look a bit better than it is. But the minifigure lineup is amazing. I think this set is a solid 75. The potential best till last set of the month comes out on September 6th, and early access starts from the 3rd of September up to its release day on the 6th. So you actually can't pick this up as of this video, but it is an amazing set. There are a few complaints about different minifigures and different builds that they would have preferred instead of the three, but I think Jack's House, the Town Hall, and the Curly Whirly Hill is really the best selection we could have asked for. The minifigures are pretty good. I definitely would like Disney to do a CMF of villains or something themed around the villains nights at the Disney parks into a CMF and give us that Oogie Boogie mold to go along with this, but perhaps we can have a similar set in the future that comes with a Doctor and Oogie Boogie. Nonetheless, it's still a really good set and that's not to take away from what we got. There's definitely improvements they could make we could say that about anything and just reel off a whole list of what we could add to this. And before you know it, this set's worth a grand and a half. So for £170, I think this is really, really solid. And I'm going to go with 74. I have no idea with the other numbers I've given these sets. So let's take a look at how they line up. So the results are in and I've taken a look at all the different scores and ordered them from high to low, as you can see with the scale on the screen. And Taking a look at the bottom three first, the third lowest of the list is going to be the Zelda set, which honestly, I probably would have ranked at the bottom if I was ranking these by myself. Just below Zelda, we have the Disney Advent Calendar, and to not many people's surprise, last and definitely least out of this bunch of sets is the Make and Take Christmas Decoration set, which again is still a really good set. Taking a look at the other end, you'll notice there's a few sets that are missing, specifically the Star Wars Advent, the giant Harry Potter collector set, and that CMF. So place your bets now. I want to hear in the comments which set you think is going to be top out of these three. I can confirm at third place it is not the Harry Potter one. It's an expensive set. It makes sense it's not at the top of my list. I wouldn't have put it top if I did have the choice and I'm happy with it being third, although I would have liked to see Nightmare Before Christmas in its place. Second place is the set you'll be seeing tomorrow. It is the Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. And again, stay tuned for that review and that means at the top podium position is that Dungeons and Dragons CMF. So I might pick up a mystery figure when I pick up the advent, but first up, we'll have to see if they have them in stock. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Let me know your favorite set coming out today in the comments, as well as if you predicted Dungeons and Dragons CMF would be the set ranked the highest. I guess you already saw the numbers, but don't forget to check out the videos on screen now and may the bricks be with you always.